Hello, I am Lucian Hansrik from CISPA Helmholtz Center for Information Security and today I would like to talk about explainable arguments, which is a joint work with my colleague Kamil Kluczniak, also from CISPA. Okay, so let's talk about the motivation behind, behind our work. The easiest way to, to discuss the motivation is by showing the e-voting example. So in an e-voting system, we have a system that counts votes and the user uses his personal PC with some random coins on it, potentially some secret key for some signing algorithm and the name of the person that it wants to vote off on. And at some point after the vote gets counted, there might be an, a state adversary that comes to the user and asks him to explain the, the vote. By explaining, we mean to show the secret, his secret key and the coins used to generate this vote. Unfortunately, if we don't have the following property, this might lead to some issues. And the property that we are talking about is deniability. And what we mean by deniability is that everyone in the system can explain this, this vote by generating random coins that would lead to the same value. And whatever this value is, it might be a ciphertext, a commitment scheme, or even a signature, this then uh, defines how those coins and the secret key are generated. The other thing that we want is for the user to also not be able to claim a vote, to not get money from the state adversary. So the user shouldn't be able to give an undeniable proof that he really voted for that given, uh, he really created that given vote. Uh, interestingly, um, this notion was a long-standing open problem for encryption schemes. And Sahai and Waters were the first to, to introduce a CPA construction for deniable encryption uh, in Stock 2014. However, what about uh, proof systems? So I mentioned encryptions, commitments, signatures, but the, one of the main building blocks for, for cryptographic primitives are without doubt uh, proof systems. So what about those? In this paper, we try to answer the question and we define a, a, bit, a, a, a bit stronger definition than deniability, which we call explainability. Okay, before we start, let's first recall what witness indistinguishable arguments are. So in a witness indistinguishable argument, we have a prover and a verifier. Both share a statement for some language and the prover tries to convince the verifier that the statement is true. So it's in the language. And for that, the user has a witness and potentially some, some coins that he uses for the, uh, for the computation. Those are the coins that we mentioned in the PC example. Uh, what we what we want from a witness indistinguishable argument system is that we have soundness. Informally, this means that uh, an honest verifier should always accept uh, uh, an, a, a true statement, but should not accept a false statement. So, even if the if the prover is malicious, an honest verifier should should not accept a false statement. And the other property that we want is witness indistinguishability. And by witness indistinguishability, we informally mean that the verifier should be able to tell which of the, which of, uh, which witness was used to generate the proof if, if there are multiple witnesses for the same statement. And how we model this in a security game, we basically allow the verifier to, to even choose those witnesses and the prover just generates one of the proofs using one of the witnesses. And there is also a non-interactive version of, uh, so, so obviously there is, uh, there's an interactive version of witness indistinguishable arguments, but there is also a non-interactive version where we might have a setup algorithm that outputs, uh, potentially outputs a common reference string. Okay, so now how do we define explainability for, for such argument systems? So let's take a look first uh, at, at this scenario, which we call malicious setup in, in the case of the non-interactive version. 
and malicious verifier in case of the interactive version explainability. So in this setup, we have a malicious verifier or a malicious setup creator. So the, the, the person that runs the setup algorithm is malicious. And the goal of this person is to distinguish users. So is to distinguish the original prover of the, uh, cre uh, the, the original prover, so the original creator of the proof. And what we want from our system is that if we have two two parties on the left, so we have two provers, one with with witness uh, with with a normal witness and one with a different witness, witness star. We want that if the first prover is interacting or creating the proof for the verifier, then there exists a, an explain algorithm that allows the second prover to to also generate the same proof. So to to generate random coins that will lead to the same proof. So we, we want the, the second prover to be able to explain the interaction in case of interactive and the, the, the proof in case of non-interactive uh, arguments. Okay, and now um, this was this was for, for a malicious verifier. Of course, there might be a, a malicious prover and we, do, we call this um, we call this property malicious prover explainability and we consider a malicious prover that that wants to create a proof in a way that it's impossible for for a different prover with a valid witness to somehow explain this proof. And we opt for a much, much stronger definition that, than one would, would think of, right? So uh, what we want to achieve is that we want to achieve something like unclaimability. So we want the uh, the prover to not be able to somehow manipulate the distribution of the random coins in a way that later on he can prove to the verifier that his coins have some kind of distribution, but the other prover, if he uses the explain algorithm, gets some coins which have a different distribution. And as the simplest way to think about this is basically that this malicious prover uses random coins that are the output of the hash function for some given string. And if the other user runs the explain algorithm to get the get random coins, he will basically uh, receive some coin some values that some value that for which he doesn't know the pre image of the hash function. And and now this malicious prover has an undeniable proof that he was the one creating the proof, right? So he can actually show a pre-image for his random coins and claim that he was the one creating the proof. And in our paper, we actually show that if we want a malicious proof, if we want malicious proof of explainability for argument systems, that basically implies a unique proof. So there is only one valid proof for, for a given statement. Okay, so, so how do we how do we define um, malicious setup explainability more formally. So what what we do is we 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 create a game between the challenger and the adversary, and we allow the adversary to choose the statement, and provide two valid witnesses, and also a CRS because we are talking about the the malicious setup. So we are in the non-interactive setting, and what the challenger does, he checks that. Um, the, two, the two witnesses output by the adversary are valid. He then uses the, the proof algorithm, so the, the, the prover algorithm, to generate a proof for, for witness one, so for the first witness, and then uses this explain algorithm that, that we discussed and with, with the different, with the second uh, witness, so with witness star, and as input it also gets the uh, output of the proof of the of the first prover and this explain algorithm outputs some random coins p and those coins are then used by the challenger together with this uh, with the second witness to generate uh, to generate a different different proof uh, and the adversary wins if at the end the the challenger received two different witnesses
uh, two different so, excuse me so two different arguments okay and malicious verifier explainability so for the interactive version we define it in a in a similar way but that involves more transcripts so it, it was easier to to present malicious setup explainability for the interactive ver uh, for the non-interactive version and but but we also in the paper we also present uh, um, the malicious verifier explainability in more details if you're interested you can you can read it up in more details in the paper okay so why is malicious verifier and malicious setup and so those two definitions, why are they interesting? Because if we have a, a, a malicious setup or malicious verifier explainable argument system, it's immediately implied that it is witness indistinguishable. And to see that, we, we, uh, we, we, we showed this the following example. So the verifier um, sends two witnesses, like in the witness indistinguishability game, to the prover. The prover responds with one proof. and uh, because we have explainability, that also means that there exists random coins, coins and coin star, which can actually explain both of the witnesses. So if we go back, we retract everything, the prover could potentially use coins or coin star, and the verifier ha has no means to actually check which of the, which of the witnesses and which of the coins were used. Um, so, how do we now formally define malicious prover and also a, 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 a stronger definition, which, which is only for the non-interactive version, which we call full explainability? Um, it's, it's fairly easy to, def to define malicious prover explainability. Basically, what, what we do is we create a, a, an, a game between the, the challenger and the adversary where the challenger um, generates the, the common reference string in an in a honest way and provides it to the adversary and the adversary outputs a statement and two arguments. We of course check that those arguments are valid. So we, we run the verify algorithm on, on those arguments and the adversary wins if those arguments were valid, but they are, but they are different. So the, they have different representation and what this basically means is our definition implies that they ha that every construction that is malicious prover explainable must have unique arguments, so unique proofs, right? And full explainability is a combination of malicious prover and malicious setup explainability. So if a, if a scheme is fully explainable, so if a non-interactive um, explainable argument system is fully explainable. That means that it's all uh, that it's prover explainable and setup explainable. And how do we model this uh, formally? What we do is we instead of of generating the the CRS in in a trusted way by the challenger, we allow the adversary to output the, the common reference string for for the for the argument system. And yeah, like I said, this implies both malicious prover and malicious setup explainability. Okay, so um, so now let's talk about the, the main application or main the main application that we show in the paper. But of course, there are potentially many other applications. And um, the, the application that I would like to talk about is CCA one deniable encryption. So this our uh, we, we present the first construction of CCA1 deniable encryption. And our main building block is the Nauer Young CPA to CCA1 transformation for standard encryption, uh, public encryption schemes. And the idea is as follows. So um, the CCA1 ciphertext contains two ciphertexts for a standard CPA encryption scheme. Uh, ciphertext C, which is an encryption of the message under uh, public key PK, and ciphertext C prim, uh, which is the encryption uh, uh, under uh, of the message M under public key P prime, and and then we also have uh, the, the ciphertext for the CCA encryption also contains a non-interactive zero knowledge that both C and C prime are valid encryptions of the message. Okay, 
So this is the, the this is uh, the well known Nauer Young's transformation. So what we can do is actually um, we can first replace this encryption scheme with the deni the CPA deniable encryption scheme from uh, Sahai and Waters. But the problem is that the, the proof system that we that we use in this transformation requires zero knowledge. And what what we are discussing in our paper, we, we can only achieve witness indistinguishability. So uh, in our case, uh, in, in case of this transformation, witness indistinguishability is not enough. So what we actually did, we show that using the random oracle model, we can we can replace the the non-interactive zero knowledge proof with a non-interactive witness indistinguishable proof and and a change to the statement. So now the statement is that um, in the brackets we have the old statement. So ciphertext C and C prime are valid, but we extend this using an OR proof uh, and say that the hash of the both ciphertext is a DDH tuple. And this this is what we call a trapdoor witness, and this trapdoor witness allows us to um, to make the changes in in, in the security proof uh, without relying on zero knowledge, and we, we just base the, the the changes in the proof on witness indistinguishability. Okay, so now since we replace the zero knowledge proof with a witness indistinguishable proof, we can actually um, run our explainable non-interactive um, witness indistinguishable proof instead of the NISIC, and we get a fully uh, fully uh, um, deniable encryption scheme. So at the end, if we replace those building blocks with, uh, so this, the, the encryption schemes with the CPA deniable encryption scheme from Sahai and Waters, and the NIVI proof with our explainable NIVIs, uh, at the end, we get a CCA1 deniable encryption scheme. Okay, so, so how do we actually uh, construct um, interactive explainable arguments? It's a fairly simple construction. So uh, we, we base it on witness encryption. So in witness encryption, uh, one can encrypt um, a message for a given statement. And if the, if the recipient, so if the decryptor knows a given uh, witness for, for, for the statement, he can then decrypt. However, if the statement is true, uh, the ciphertext hides the message, uh, like in CPA security. And how do we how do we use this um, this witness encryption in, in our uh, interactive explainable arguments? Uh, we, we, the verifier first chooses a random string, a long random string R, and then uses the witness encryption scheme to encrypt it, and sends the ciphertext to the to the prover, because the prover knows the witness he can decrypt the, the proof and respond with it. And what the proof is, it's basically the string R. So the verifier checks that the, the value sent by the prover is the, the string that, that the verifier chose at the, in the first step. Of course, because the string is, is in the security parameter, if the statement is, is not true, so the ciphertext contains no information about R, uh, the only way the prover can win, uh, so can can uh, can convince a, a, ver a verifier to accept, is by guessing this this random random string. However, guessing is uh, guessing the string is, is hard, so so soundness of the of the proof follows. And for explainability, we actually need something something more. So, for explainability, we need a property for witness encryption that wasn't defined yet and which we call robustness. And by robustness, we mean that if two provers use a different uh, witness for, for the decryption, they will always get the same, uh, they will always get the same uh, message. So there, it's not, it's not, uh, there, there is no way to encrypt two different messages that will decrypt uh, if you use two different witnesses. And we actually show that if we have robust witness encryption, this construction is malicious prover and malicious verifier secure. Okay, so how do we actually define robust witness encryption? So it's 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 like I said, um, we we want that decryption of 
of the ciphertext will, using two different witnesses that are valid will always output the same message. So we allow the adversary to, to, uh, to, to return a statement, a ciphertext and two witnesses, and he, if he's able to somehow uh, construct those values in a way that they decrypt to something else using two different witnesses, valid witnesses, then he won this robustness game. But um, yeah, if, if, a, if a scheme is robust, this shouldn't be possible. And how, how do we achieve robustness? So robustness can be easily achieved using non-interactive zero knowledge proofs. So, and, and the correctness of the witness encryption. So what we do is um, as part of the ciphertext, we also add a proof that the, um, that the ciphertext was created honestly. So, and once it's created honestly by correctness of the witness encryption scheme, uh, robustness follows. Okay. Uh, how do we construct uh, non-interactive explainable arguments. So we use the, the, the well-known construction for, for NISIX uh, uh, using IO. And what we do during the setup algorithm is we, we obfuscate and prove correctness of the following program. So the program uh, gets as input the statement and the witness of the prover. And if the statement and the witness is, um, is false, it aborts. If it's true, it it returns a signature under the statement. So the actual proof is a, is a signature under the statement. So what the prover does, the prover just run, runs the obfuscated program using his witness and potential random coins, which are actually not used in, in this. So, um, and what the verifier does, once he gets the proof, he just runs the, the verification algorithm for, for the signature scheme to check that the proof is valid. Uh, how do we actually prove soundness? So uh, we use the simulation properties of the uh, indistinguishability obfuscation, and at the end of the day, we end up with a with a forgery under a statement that's false. And because the statement is false, we never queried it to our unforgeability um, unforgeability oracle. So so the the proof that we get is a valid forgery for the signature scheme. And we actually show that this, uh, this scheme is fully explainable and sound, uh, soundness follows from, from the zero knowledge uh, proof that we use in the setup algorithm and explainability follows from the fact that the prover is, um, that the prover is deterministic. Uh, in the actual scheme, we, we use, we use uh, the, the key for the signing algorithm is actually generated using a punctured PRF uh, and it's based on the statement, so we also have an obfuscation for the, for the verification key. But for simplicity, I, I try to, to 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 describe it that way. Um, okay. Uh, we also in the paper we also show that you can do a, a different construction that is malicious prover explainable, and for that construction we also only need a non-interactive witness indistinguishable proof in the in the setup, so we can actually instantiate that that construction without relying on on the random oracle model. So here, because we use uh, we use the setup in the setup, we use a NISIC, and this NISIC has to be in the random oracle for for security to hold. But we have also show a construction that is only malicious prover explainable. It's not fully explainable, but it works with without random oracle. Okay, so so to to sum up our contribution. We formalized and constructed non-interactive and interactive explainable argument system. We constructed the first CCA1 secure deniable encryption, and we also formalized and constructed robust witness encryption. Uh, we also leave some open problems. So the, the first question is whether we can design explainable arguments without witness encryption or indistinguishability obfuscation. Um, the second question is whether uh, full explainability can be achieved without random oracle. And maybe uh, uh, the last open problem is whether we can construct other explainable primitives. So not only deniable, but also explainable and in the sense of our definitions. Thank you for listening. And if you have questions, feel free to ask us via email.